Good morning. I'm having my coffee and I'm trying to wake up. Also, what I'm trying to do is to get these clips put together. I'm doing a video about making a cooking video. Now, you may be wondering why specifically a cooking video and not just making a video about making a video. Well, it's because making a cooking video involves a lot, well, not a lot, but a somewhat different process than other videos. The cooking videos generally take a lot of time to put together and a lot of extra video clips. Um, there's a lot of extra work behind the scenes that you just don't see. And that's what I kind of wanted to bring to light in this, was to show what it is to make a cooking video. Um, it's not a matter of just going and cooking a meal. I can go in the kitchen, cook a dish in an hour, and have something beautiful and wonderful to show for it. But when it comes to making a video, that same exact recipe turns into a six or eight hour process to film. That's what I'm talking about. And then there's the post-production work. You have to take, you know, 20 or 30 or sometimes even 40 different clips and sometimes from different cameras with different formats and merge all of that together into one cohesive thing. And that's exactly what I'm doing here on this video is putting all of these clips together for this. So, I'll tell you what, I'm not looking very pretty. I haven't fixed myself up. I've still got bedhead and I'm ready to get started with some editing as soon as I get a little more coffee in me. So let's get in, get busy and uh, I'll show you what we do. I'm going to uh, catch a different camera angle and do some um, behind the scenes information from the sofa over here. So let's take a, what's that pesky logo? Let's take a look at this. Uh, I'll take a look at this again over here. Let's see what we can do about this logo thing. We'll <coughs> Stay. It pops up in every film. Imagine that. This morning I decided to um, shoot a film on what I do when I'm actually making a video and um, the, the different approaches and aspects and angles and things like that that I, that I uh, choose to work with and why and why I do what I do um, and how this all kind of evolved. So let's kind of start at the beginning. Um, first of all, two cameras. Um, this is my old one that you're looking through right now. Uh, that's my old 1080 HP, and when I say old, it's not that old, it's only a couple of years. But uh, that's the one I've been using that has really been a game changer, and it's a fantastic camera. Um, this is the new camera <clears throat> that has just been purchased with basically YouTube money, my earnings from the last year on YouTube. So uh, it did do some good for me and we're moving forward. Uh, so I wanted to also show you, if you've ever watched one of my old videos, this is it right here. Uh, this is the original Canon camera that I used for uh, shooting Texas Cooking Today. This is a little A1000IS, it's a power shot. These have the ability to record video as well as take pictures. They take remarkable pictures. Uh, in fact, all of my thumbnails up to date have been these until I've just got this Canon and so now you're going to be seeing some different thumbnails with a little better color, depth of uh, field and, and just better quality and that's the reason I got the Canon is I wanted a, um, <clears throat> I wanted a still camera. I wanted a camera that gives me a solid picture uh, that is very high quality and that's because later on I would seriously like to do some publishing. I want to publish some of the uh, recipes that I've done and I want to take some of the pictures that I've taken and use those for the recipe. Well, as I was doing some research on publishing and I started looking into the images I've taken with this, they're kind of low quality images relative to what the publishing industry would like to see. So that's the reason I got a 
Canon camera, and that's you know I'm not promoting Canon, but uh, but all of the cameras I use are the same brand, and I do that because interfaces are the same, and it's easy to to morph from one to the next. Um, but uh, I, I got the new DSLR for the purpose of fine, crisp pictures. Pardon me, I had a bug. And um, these pictures are important to me because. Later on, when I go to publishing, I need something of very, very high quality. That way, they can be converted, put into a book, and then the book has very, very high quality images to help teach with. So if everything goes right, that's, that's kind of the long-term plan on that. Uh, so this camera had the importance of that. It also has importance of better thumbnails uh, and the importance of being able to take video, too, and do a pretty decent job of it. I think what I'm enjoying about this is it's better for low light, so I'm now able to turn off the extremely bright halogens that I would use with that camera. And you'll notice right now we've got some background light that's killing it, and wow, it's, there's, there's issues with a regular video camera. Now the other camera over there, that's my Canon HFR72. Uh, we'll show some pictures on it. The Canon HFR72 is really cool uh, in that it was a lower cost video camera but still had an audio input jack and I discovered early on using this guy that if I do any frying or anything that requires uh, cooking that, that creates high pitched noises, it just wipes out the audio on it. I mean it completely takes over and anything I say gets drowned out totally and so it's, it really stinks. So anyway. Here I am setting up for doing a video. Uh, today I'm setting up actually to do a green bean casserole video and it's, it's using fresh green beans. So I'm about to take my green beans and uh, snap the little stem off of them so that I can put them in the bowl and make them presentable. So this is, you know, all part of, you know, if you're curious about what does it take to do a cooking video, there's a lot of setup, okay? Because if you don't set up the scene just right and it looks sloppy, people call you out on it. I learned that early on. And, and it really improved me. It was important um, because I had to learn to keep my set immaculately clean to uh, make the set look inviting. And uh, that way my videos are more inviting. Uh, like right now, I'm snapping the, the tips off of these green beans and making sure they're perfect because I don't want ugly green beans on the video. And they need to be prepped so that I don't have to do this while I'm trying to shoot. So this is real important and um, little things like this, folks, if you think you're going to start shooting cooking videos and you're going to be able to make a video in oh, an hour and then just go on with life because that's how long it takes to make whatever dish, um, it's not the way it works. <laughs> It's so much more time consuming and uh, so detailed and meticulous, it's unbelievable. Uh, so all I can say is, um, well, enjoy. Uh, give it a try if you want. And uh, if it's your thing, then I'm sure you'll do well in it. Now, <clears throat> I'll admit, I put myself into this deep. I wanted to create cooking videos. I wanted to teach people culinary technique because I know that you can find a million recipes for any one thing. Like I'm doing green bean casserole. There's got to be at least a thousand recipes within fingertip instantly. Just Google it, boom, right there. All of these different recipes. So recipes are easy. But what about the techniques that create the better flavor in this recipe? What can I do to, to bump up that? That's what I teach. I teach those techniques that pull this off. I teach pan searing, I teach how to use a food mill. I teach the basis of what makes the cooking work or not work. And that's sort of the difference in this. Most of the, the, the cooking videos that are out there, they're teaching recipes, okay? And that's cool, we need that. But there's not a lot of people out there that are actually showing somebody how to sliver an onion. They just say, oh, take these slivered onions and do this. <laughs> All right? 
that's what you need here, uh, and that's what I wanted to teach, which is a, a full-on tutorial series. And um, I also realized that there's a secondary audience. There's people that didn't want the tutorial. They're interested in the recipe, sure enough, but the tutorials were driving them nuts. So I had to kind of divide things up. Now, using two cameras, this gets even better because now I can take the second footage uh, and use that footage as my second video rather than having to do double shoots with one camera, which I have been doing. Uh, and I, so what I'm trying to do there is to smooth things up for myself a little bit. And it's going to be a little tricky at first getting used to using two cameras and mixing the videos into one uh, final product. Also, both of these cameras are shooting two different formats, so I have to be able to blend those two formats together. Uh, and that's all just done in the editing, all right? And that's, um, if you don't have it already and you're thinking of doing this kind of stuff, you really want to consider getting Adobe. Yeah, I know, it's expensive. Uh, however, you're going to find it infinitely practical. And once you learn to use it, it will save you hours of labor. Okay, so uh, get that editing software. Don't overspend on your editing software. You don't need top of the line to start doing YouTube. Uh, what you need is something practical that gets the job done and makes it look quality. Um, we were talking about cameras a minute ago. <clears throat> oh, these green beans smell so good. We are talking about cameras and you know, I was mentioning how, how this had some shortcomings, you know, video-wise, it was 720p uh, audio. The, the, there's no audio jack on it, so there's no way to run what I'm doing now, which is a lavalier mic, and that gives you really clean sound. Um, so, when it comes to cameras, one is light hungry, you're a light hog. This one is not a light hog, but it burns so many gigabytes it's unbelievable um, so I'm, I'm dealing with twice as much video data as a, I am with that camera <laughs> um, and then so learning that editing and putting all of that together is so important um, camera positioning getting things worked out in the frame that's all easier said than done. And uh, I sh certainly wish each and every one of you luck on that. Um, there are challenges to this. And if you're up to that kind of challenge and this is the kind of thing that you think is fun, then you might want to consider it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be honest with you. I have found that the um, um, video recipe and cooking market on uh, the internet and on YouTube are very crowded spaces and the competition is fierce uh, so all I can say is if you're going to do it you're gonna to have to be ready to bring it that's all there is to it uh, my competition is um, pretty much unyielding because they are earning their living doing this me I'm working towards earning my living doing this um, this camera was paid for by earnings from YouTube and I am working to fix it so that this becomes a part of my future, uh, part of the way I, I live life. And I would love that for this to become um, basically my income in the future. Not all because I want a diversified income where I'm getting a income coming in from multiple areas but I would like for this to be a good chunk of it uh, also I do photography so this important uh, camera right here very very important I can get back into the kind of photography I like doing uh, and uh, that's a whole different thing I'll be introducing that in a different way on YouTube but I'll announce it on this channel when I do anyway I think it's time to get in the kitchen I've been busy doing my beans while we're talking and, uh, wow, time to finish putting together a cooking video. There's a lot to this. <clears throat> I'm in my kitchen, 
and getting everything measured out. Um, let's see, like now, one cup of heavy cream. And of course, this also helps me because when I introduce my ingredients later on uh, in the video and I give everybody the quantities, this helps me from having measured it all out remember those quantities. Because when you have a complex recipe like this, there's, there's a lot of items and it's just gonna take a while to get all of that down. <clears throat> so, getting everything laid out. So A, it looks good. You don't want the green beans hiding the broth or whatever, you know, to make it look nice and appetizing. So we kind of move things around to get good placement on camera. Now I'm getting placement to shoot from this angle, but when I turn everything around from this angle, it might not look the same or as good, and I'm gonna have to change things up. And there's other stuff I need to measure out, like I gotta get this flower measured and, and some other stuff. So there's a lot of layout that has to be done. And then after the layout, we take it all back apart for the next scene where we go to cutting or slicing or preparing or, or cooking or whatever it is that we're doing. So scene after scene after scene causes the video, which you know normally cooking this would take me uh, oh, at the most an hour. Um, doing a video on it takes three to four hours. So suddenly we're into this up to our neck in uh, how to do this and then after you've spent hours in the production of a video and then you finished it up finally you then have to go into post-production work and that's where the real work begins okay because this will seem minor compared to that especially at first that later on once you get good at it you'll get a rhythm and it'll get easier this man this is a delicious recipe <laughs> I've got some more prep to do, so I better get on with it. Okay, I finished prepping up and getting everything laid out just right so that when I hit it from different camera angles, it's gonna look good. And it's gonna be a beautiful presentation that will be eye-catching for people that allows everyone to see easily what I'm using and how much I'm using. And it makes, it makes teaching cooking a little bit easier and a little more concise, okay? So I want everything to be very accurate when I'm teaching cooking, as much as I can get it. Um, cooking is an art, so there is a lot of flexibility, a lot of sway room, and so I've got to do it just right. Anyway, this is all part of the setup. Um, getting that camera, getting the angle right, getting where you need to be, putting on the right outfit, Having your mic set up for remembering to turn it on, that, believe it or not, that's happened more than once. Uh, you forget to turn it on, next thing you're going, oh God, I've got to figure out some over, overdub to do on this. And uh, so there you have it. I need to turn that camera on. Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> see, it's just like that. Forget to turn a camera on. Um, it's as simple as, as, I forgot to push that one button, dang it, and then you're doing something over. And then there's saying it the right way, uh, often there's multiple shoots on, especially intros, I have a hard time with the intros, so after that everything just seems to roll smooth, but getting it started, sometimes is difficult. Okay, well, I'll move on to the next clip, which is my intro for the first show. Okay, so I'm busy trying to set up a scene and <clears throat> what I need to do is to focus my camera. Now, what I have to do here is to get it so that it is focused the right way. And so what I'm doing is I'm using <laughs> the camera that you're watching me on right now. There it is. I've got the focus, so I'm gonna lock that bring this up, recompose it to the position I want it to be in. So I'm going to have to stop right there because that's kind of in the wrong spot. My head is going to be a little further over this way because I'm going to be sitting on a stool there. So my head should be closer to here. Which means I get to recompose this further this way. There we go. 
Uh, that's what I'm wanting there. Now, get that lock again. Got it. So, now that I have that locked in place, you know, because of the way this camera is designed to work, it holds that focus right there uh, when I start recording. So, uh, I need to make sure. Moving mode. Audio is on and receiving. Ah, there we go. Oh, I had to turn on my audio meter so I could see that I'm getting it. And boom, now, now I'm filming. Okay, okay, so I'll move this camera. I'm just going to set it here. Let's see what I get here. So you can kind of see some of the background of what's going on there. And uh, I'll bring this down a little here. Okay. So next I'll bring in my seat where I have focus to. Because this particular camera doesn't offer that feature. So I have to do what I have to do to make it work. It looks like it's a little bit. There we go. Get him leveled up directly on me. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, now that I've set everything up and I'm recording on this, I'll be cutting out a big chunk of that, but I'm prepared now. I'm ready to go ahead and shoot my first video on my red salsa. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be making a salsa. This is a red salsa. Okay, now this is what you see a lot of times. Okay, this is, <clears throat> I guess, my outro for my cooking video. Well, folks, as you can see, there's a lot to this. Uh, in a little bit, I'm about to do the editing on what you've just seen. There's a lot of different elements to making a cooking video. So what I have to do is to take um, usually on average of 20 to 40 different clips, stitch them together, make them look smooth, and uh, produce a video. And generally the production part of it is anywhere from four to eight hours, depending on the recipe. And then post-production can be anywhere from two to four hours for most videos. So there's a lot of production time. And the post-production, I've been able to reduce that. That used to be almost a full day per video. Uh, until I got good at this. When you're dealing with that many different clips and uh, all of the extra work that goes with it, that takes a lot of time to sift through. So anyway, uh, I'm hoping to get a video out for how to edit a cooking video. You know, how to put it all together and kind of try to make something of it, hopefully. Um, and if everything goes right, I'll try to get that video out also. After all, this is a cooking channel, and I don't focus on this kind of video. It's not what I normally do. Uh, if you would, please take a look at Texas Cooking today. You're going to find some wonderful recipes. There is some really good food there, and the best part is, is you can be the worst cook in the world, and on those videos, I take you step by step through the recipe, uh, the tutorials, it's almost impossible to not get a good recipe when you're following my tutorial uh, because they're just they're overly detailed. All right. If you would, please click the like button if you appreciated this video or if you liked it. If you have any comments, anything to say, hey, I'm uh, open to whatever. So if you would just type down there in the comments box if you have a question or a um, suggestion or you know uh, maybe a request we work on those too so please take a look there's some really neat stuff there thank you for watching Texas cooking today and folks please have a good day bye bye oh back to work <clears throat>